when you're putting this much kefir into you know, a 16 ounce jar of milk, there's no way that kefir is not going to destroy anything else that's in that milk. I mean, it could have listeria. I don't care what it's got in it. Once you hit it with this much kefir and just that amount of milk, that kefir is going to absolutely obliterate anything that's in there within a very short amount of time. Very short amount of time. No time for anything else to proliferate. So, use a lot of grains in your milk, no matter what. Much better results. I recommend a 3 to 1 ratio. Um, depending on the temperature, could go to... 2 to 1 or to 4 to 1 depending on what kind of temperatures you're dealing with. So kefir has many major health benefits. Here we can see in one study they found the antibacterial and antifungal properties of kefir was equal to ampicillin, azithromycin, amoxicillin, and many others. They looked at the effect of kefir on E. coli. They found that the effect was bacteriostatic and mainly due to the organic acids produced during the fermentation process. The presence of acetic acid improved the effect. For instance, yogurt did not inhibit E. coli, whereas kefir did, at the lower pH produced by lactic acid. So considering the inhibitory effect over gram-negative bacteria oscillated from clinical feces, we believe that kefir could potentially be used as a probiotic if gut colonization with kefir screens could be achieved, acid production in situ could inhibit colonization with pathogenic microorganisms. Furthermore, as a homemade product, kefir presents a low risk of contamination due to its ability to inhibit and or to compete with spoilage microorganisms. In this study, they described the lactic acid bacteria that exist in kefir grains. They've gotten considerable attention because of their ability to compete and inhibit the development of spoilage and pathogenic microorganisms, either by the production of lactic acid or by increasing the expression of antimicrobial agents. All right, here's another study from a paper in 2017. Kefir grains can inhibit the development of undesirable and pathogenic microorganisms. Since the microbes contained in grains are capable of producing lactic and acetic acids, ethanol, peptides, and other biologically active components, many studies have shown that species of lactobacilli contained in kefir grains can be successfully used in the treatment of renal infections as they are able to produce a range of antimicrobial compounds. More specifically, it has been reported that milk fermented with kefir grains exhibits anti-mutagenic effects against um, DMAB and against MNNG. Both of them are the most potent mutagenic chemicals known. Let's see that again. Kefir exhibits anti-mutagenic effects against some of the most potent mutagenic chemicals known. And in recent research data, the consumption of fermented kefir and milk with kefir grains showed uh, many good effects that protect against atherogenesis and the formation of plaques in the arteries. Results in significant inhibition of tumor growth and positive effects on cholesterol metabolism. Moreover, a bacteriocin produced by the lactobacillus strain isolated from kefir grains exhibited antimicrobial activity against E. coli, Listeria, Salmonella, Typhurium, and Salmonella enteritis. So let's see that again. Antimicrobial activity against E. coli and Listeria. 
So moving on, on the other hand, new research evidence revealed that the health benefits of kefir grains are also attributed to the kefirin. Specifically, the kefirin presents antioxidant activity, antifungal and antibacterial properties, and epithelium protection. According to a study in 2013, a mixture of kefir isolated microorganisms was administered to hamsters infected with C. diff and resulted in a milder symptom of C. diff and an extinction of death amongst the hamsters examined. The comparison was conducted between a group of mice that consumed the probiotic and another group that was administered the standard drug from the pharmaceutical companies. The antibiotic showed more aggressive symptoms of diarrhea and almost all the hamsters ended up dead. The results demonstrated that kefir isolated bacteria and yeasts may contribute to protection against C. diff induced enteral colitis in hamsters. In addition, kefir grains can be successfully applied to a specific population suffering from lactose intolerance. The enzyme B-galactosidase is naturally present in kefir grains and reduces the lactose content, leading to a product suitable for lactose intolerant persons. Likewise, the reduced lactose concentration and higher B-galactosidase activity in kefir make it suitable for lactose tolerant people. So this chart here is looking at the growth of E. coli the square at the top is the natural E. coli growth. And the circles at the bottom is the kefir. So as you can see, the kefir absolutely obliterated the E. coli and it did not take off nor grow. Also, these studies were done with uh, normal amounts of kefir grains in the milk, which is around uh, 5%, 2 to 5%. So that's going to be it for today. Uh, I'm going to make a few more videos. Uh, this is going to be in uh, one of my next videos. I'm reading this research paper on different inoculation rates of kefir grains. And uh, yeah, using more grains uh, makes a better kefir. All right, until next time, guys, happy kefirin'.